What is up guys? Frank Macaluso here from Garageaholic. Another episode of the E30 N54 swap. Today we're going to be doing the oil cooler. To oil, the oil cooler. We're going to be using AN10 lines, completely custom, because I want to have the customi custom ability to... This is not even a word. Stay tuned. The, uh, into the actual oil cooler with uh, little O-rings and they kind of clip together and they set inside and then a, a bolt goes through and kind of screws into it, <clears throat> into the housing. Today we're going to be doing something very similar. Lucky for us, we have these special AN10 fittings that have O-rings already on them and there is a bracket here that connects the two, kind of like something like that. And then this bolts right through that. And then obviously you can install your AN10 lines from there. You have our AN10 tubing. This is a uh, nylon outside, but there's also stainless steel uh, reinforcement within the tube that goes on there. I've got just about enough length of tube in order to do both sides. Then it goes into this oil cooler here. Oil cooler has what's called NPT fittings, national pipe thread fittings on one side that screw right into these adapters. And then obviously, the AN10 fitting here, which is what we're called a JIC fitting, that goes there. And we have a 45 degree adjust adjustment, which obviously the hose goes into this side, and then this side goes right into here. So we're like gonna end up having a side something like that, and then another one maybe like that. And it's gonna basically position the oil cooler offset so that both of these lines can go up um, right in front of the radiator and then go into the existing locations as shown there. So let's take a look at the radiator. Let's see what kind of a Let's take a look at the radiator. Let's see what kind of a opportunity we have for uh, installing a fan a puller fan in, uh, behind the radiator and we won't, don't want to have any interferences So we want to make sure that our tubing is long enough to snake around that fan when we do install it. Let's take a look. So I made like a cardboard cutout of a 14 inch fan. I think I want to use 14 inch. I think that's going to be the best size. In front of the radiator, it's going to fit, it would fit really nicely, but I don't want a pusher fan. I want a puller fan. I want a fan to sit in between the radiator and the engine because with a shroud there, it actually makes the effectiveness of cooling much better. It's actually not, it's kind of difficult to see here, but it is there. Um, and as you can see with the offset look, it's actually going to allow for the oil cooler lines, which are located right here, to snake down the passenger side of the vehicle and go to the oil cooler, which I feel like locating underneath the, uh, underneath the actual radiator. And it's not obviously not going to be the lowest point in the system, it's gonna be far from it, but it is going to be located in a spot where it's out of the way, the routing is simplified, and it gets air. Now, when doing any of these installations, you got to make sure that you got room for the thing that you're trying to install. We're putting the fan over here. And I want to figure out where to put the res the coolant tank, the coolant reservoir, the coolant cooler, the oil cooler. And I'm thinking something just like this, where it's out of the way of everything, yet not the lowest point in the system, yet still gets air, yet still can have easy routing, and yet still has an easy way to mount and install. I think that this is gonna fit the bill right here. Let's take a closer look. There is the perceived location of the fan, 14 inch. I might go to 16 inch to get this a little additional uh, distance there. That means it's gonna end up getting wider on that side and I need to consider that. But overall, location is gonna look something like this where it's not really in the way of anything. And the two lines are gonna then snake up and go right into the oil cooler located right there. I'll annotate really quick so you can see what I'm talking about. So with the oil cooler mounted there, the two lines can snake up and around and not really interfere with the fan in any way, shape or form. It's a matter of getting it installed on the existing mounting locations on the oil cooler to the actual core support of the E30. All right, I think I got it. This guy's gonna end up getting mounted just like that, which is my most desired location to make plumbing super easy. Just that the mounting is a little bit more difficult. This is a stainless steel bracket that will end up getting bolted on both bottom sides of this guy. The plumbing will go right up and through. It will not interfere with the radiator or the fan, and it'll allow for airflow. 
I'm going to be doing a bracket similar to that I did for the intercooler, and that will be in another video, the next video coming up. So that's going to be a good one. But these holes uh, line up exactly with these holes, so there will be either a weld nut or some sort of a rivet nut on the other side here to allow this thing to sit and bolt on from underneath. It'll be bent in two different directions and welded onto here at two different locations. So these guys will be, there'll be two of these, and it'll be exactly the same. So let's, let's uh, bend, bend these guys real quick and just see how everything fits. Now, in order to mount this hard mounted, we're gonna take the same brackets, we're gonna to need to make modifications to it, but we're gonna mount it just like that. In order to make the installation easier, we're gonna use rivet nuts. And these are the rivet nuts, these are compressible rivet nuts, so you use your rivet nut tool. This is an Astro 1427 tool, and basically you put the rivet nut in like this, I gotta drill out the holes just a tiny bit, put it in here like this, and then use the rivet nut tool and expand it, and it basically crimps the rivets onto this uh, sheet metal, this aluminum sheet metal, and that way you can use any type of M6 and screw it right on without having to worry about holding a nut on the backside. So it's pretty handy. I've got the drill, I've got the bit, I'm gonna drill out all four of these holes, I'm gonna put the rivet nuts in, I'm gonna put the bracket on, and then I'm going to resize it, and I'm gonna keep it a little higher. And that'll allow me and guarantee me that I'm not gonna have any low points in the, uh, in the entire bottom of the car, and that includes the oil. So this guy has been tacked on. It is straight to the radiator, which is exactly what we want. Uh, it, it's not, it, it looks like right here, it's in really good shape. It's a little bit lower in the front. That's something that I can adjust. Um, and I'm going to need to clean up and re-weld all this, but I just wanted to tack everything in place just to get it fit. And here's what it looks like up here. You can see that the, there is enough room for the MPT fitting and the hose to go all the way up through and snake into the oil cooler. Let's take a look at the piping and tubing to see how everything is going to route. All right, so I need two, I need two lengths of this, of this AN10 uh, hose. The first length is 16 inches, the second length is 20 inches. Now I'm probably going to need to trim it again based on the anticipated length of the fittings, but I don't know exactly how long it'll be, and I don't wanna to have too much slack because that's gonna create a kink in the wire, in the tube, and I don't want that either. So this guy here is 16, and from here to here is 20. Now the reason I marked these with electrical tape is because that's where I'm gonna be cutting it. When you cut these things with a cutoff wheel, you wanna make sure that you tape it on either side and cut right in the center of the tape. That allows, that prevents fraying on the, on the end of the wire, which would otherwise prevent you from getting it into this very close tight tolerance fitting, which you need to unscrew, put, put it in, and then you gotta start screwing this down in order to create the clamping force. If you have too much fray here on the outside, this will not fit in without destroying the tube and um, you're just gonna have a really bad crimp and possibly even leaking. So then I gotta cut this guy and then I wanna start installing it. Actually, I'll go through that. I'll go through that next. All right, so we gotta start somewhere. Where are we gonna start? I gotta stop saying all right in the beginning of every, of every scene. Not very good. This is the way that this guy fits, right? Okay, so this is gonna end up fitting into there and screwing into the oil filter housing. So these guys need to have straight ends going to it, right? So these straight ends are gonna go there, just like that. This one's gonna go in like that. Okay. This guy gets loose. This guy gets, I'll put these guys aside. These are the two that are gonna end up going into the uh, actual oil filter, the oil uh, cooler. Um, we have our two lengths, we have our 16 inch, we have our 20 inch. 
Doesn't matter which one we put in where, but it does matter when we start to install it into the actual oil filter housing. And yes, I meant oil filter housing. So this guy is getting installed just like that. Gotta make sure that it bottoms out, okay? And then this guy gets installed in my righty, just like that, right? And you wanna keep on screwing it in as much as you can. Actually, I'm just gonna just zoom in through this actually. I'm, I'm just going to do this in uh, this act in actual speed, uh, just for the first one, and then you just keep on tightening it up. And what it's doing is it's compressing the wall into the fitting so tight that there really is almost no chance of leakage. Okay, and then it should bottom out, just like that, and this guy is clamped. So now we'll do the same thing with the other one. We'll install these actually into the oil filter housing and let them fall where they fall, and then put these guys on as well and see what length I need to cut. Okay, so I got them installed. It is pretty loose, but it's good enough for me to get the lengths that I need. Taking a look at the oil cooler down here, and I need to put the fittings in, but you can see it's so easy now to figure out exactly where I need to be to get it to fit and mark it right where it needs to go. So this definitely needs to be shortened. I'll have to cut that again, shorten it. This guy here, same deal, right? I mean, look, it's gonna be, it's gonna be kind of snaking around and going up and over this lower radiator hose just like that right so it's going to come around so actually it could probably just stay like that and i'll just probably mark it right somewhere like that right just mark it right there so i need to mark these and then i'm going to take them back off and then i'm going and then after i take them off i'm going to cut them at those marks final install everything and then i'm done so yes i'm wearing a white bandana tonight i'm wearing a regular white t-shirt i'm wearing pajama pants and i'm wearing moccasins why? Because I had an idea and I wanted to execute it and I didn't even have time to dress. That's right. I'm taking apart the radiator core support, the radiator, and I'm gonna get the access that I need. I know where the fan resides. I don't need to do any of the other stuff. I just need to basically hook up from the oil, oil uh, filter reservoir, oil, blah, blah, blah. I need to hook up from the oil filter down to the cooler and I know exactly how to do it and it's just so much easier without all this stuff in the way. Let's get this out, let's do a time lapse of getting everything done and bent and cut and whatever and get it installed. Okay guys, that just about does it. We got our upper connections done. We have them routed. We have a clamp in the middle to keep them nice and aligned and looking pretty. And then they going down to our 245s that then go to the oil cooler, which is viewable and has airflow from underneath. Now guys, I know that I got some comments on Instagram about about how there may not, might not be enough airflow and that the cooler might be a little bit too small and then I'm gonna end up uh, hitting a heat soak temperature range and that might be true and if it is true and I find that I am getting too hot especially uh, when you push the car for extended amounts of time at high boost well then we're just gonna have to get a larger oil cooler or find better airflow 
I think it's probably gonna be the former though. And if so, all we need to do is get larger, longer, and 10 lines, relocate a larger air cooler, uh, it, um, oil cooler to a different location, and I think we're good. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the white bandana. I hope you enjoyed the pajama pants and the moccasins to cap off this episode of the E30 M54 swap for the oil cooler. Next, we're gonna be doing the intercooler routing, and I hope you guys enjoy that episode, this episode, and continue to follow the build. Tell your friends, tell your folks. Don't tell your folks, actually. I don't really care if your folks actually know or care what I'm doing. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching, and uh, take it easy. Till next time, later.